Hi, and welcome to Slimbits, my effort to make a behind-the-scenes show for all the cartoons that I've made. Uh, because this is the first episode, I thought I'd kick things off with the pilot episode of Kilroy. So, uh, one of the most common questions people ask me about Kilroy is, why is everything in black and white? And, um, you know, I, in my head I like to tell myself that it's sort of a stylistic choice, and that it's really serving the story that... Um, this is a world where there is no moral gray areas. Everything's in black and white. You know, the good guys are good guys, the bad guys are bad guys, that sort of thing. Um, but really, it goes all the way back to my high school days when I would make Kilroy comic strips for, uh, you know, just to make my friends laugh. And I would draw them on the sort of newsprint that was available in our art classes. And I would take a black uh, pencil crayon or a black felt tip pen, and I would use those to, um, uh, to make the comic strips. And I kind of liked how that looked, and um, I really didn't want to change that up for, uh, for bringing this into animation. So that's why everything's in black and white. And I, and I guess it kind of has like this sort of retro, film noir-y, uh, pulpy comic strip newsprint look to it, so um, I think it works. So with Kilroy, one of my main goals with this was to be a pseudo-love letter of sorts to comic books and comic book superheroes. And I wanted to touch base on a lot of pre-existing supervillains and supervillain tropes and have a lot of my villainous characters uh, represent uh, what I consider to be the most common supervillain types. So I knew eventually I would get down to like giant evil robots and mentalists and magic users and aliens and stuff. But I wanted to start Kilroy off with a very human supervillain. And I decided I would go for like the... Uh, corporate Machiavellian supervillain, the one who had had a giant multinational corporation to hide all their evil deeds. David McOverlord here is our Lex Luthor, Norman Osborn, Justin Hammer style of uh, supervillain, the kind of guy who's you know basically untouchable by the law and it needs someone like Kilroy to go in there and uh, clean his clock. <laughs> And I, I stole a little bit of the uh, the Hank Scorpio motif, where he is essentially a Bond villain, but all his employees really like working for him. You know, he's like a fun boss who plans company outings and barbecues and stuff like that, and he's always cracking wise. Um, it's just such a fun character to, to write for. Uh, oh, so coming up is the introduction of my character. As Kilroy's sidekick slash kind of chauffeur... Um, so when I decided to put myself into the cartoon, it was mainly as so I would have an excuse to point it out and say, like, yep, I sure made this cartoon because that's me in there. Nobody else could have done that voice, um, you know, as if anyone would have stolen my billion-dollar idea like this. Um, but, you know, I just considered it sort of a proof of ownership. Um, one thing that I was always very conscientious of when writing myself into these cartoons is I didn't want to have an idealized version of myself. You know, the guy who, like, solves all the problems and who is always super quick with a joke. Um, I wrote myself as a guy who thinks he's kind of charming and thinks he's very suave. Um, but really, he's more of a hindrance to it, to Kilroy, than anything. And it's actually been kind of fun in everything that I've ever been uh, animated myself into to sort of, like, sort of play up what I think are some of my own, you know, worst qualities. But uh, in the end, like... I I think it's a, it's a pretty great character for Kilroy to, uh, to interact with. Oh, and um, this, I was, I'm very proud of this. Wanted, I wanted Kilroy to have like the typical superhero weakness. And when he's essentially you know, the Punisher, I wanted his weakness to be, well, if he's going to be shooting people, you know, let's, let's make his weakness be like, let's give him a moral code. Let's have it so he doesn't want to be violent in front of children. So, like, whenever there's kids around, he won't fire his weapons. He's just, he just won't do it. He won't expose kids to that kind of violence. And uh, I thought that was such an interesting contrast and led to some pretty uh, hilarious story opportunities and ultimately makes him, uh, makes him an okay hero to, uh, to watch. <laughs> um, and, yeah, that's, I figured that was enough groundwork to really build my my superhero love letter internet show around. And um, that's really all i got to say on the matter. Anyways, this was a pilot episode and probably going to go over like a Led Zeppelin. <laughs>